Okay, um, we want to talk to you a little bit this morning about uh, a project we've got in Cornwall called Unlocking Potential. It's a brand new project that's been with us a few months and it's evolving. Now, the irony is, is that Mark's actually Chief Executive of it, so he kind of knows the most about it in that sense. Um, but it's going to be fun to talk about what we think it is without him here, uh, particularly as it's recorded because he can watch it back later and use that as part of our appraisal or something. But um, basically, Unlocking Potential is a, a new project where we're working with uh, companies that are up in sort of a developing stage. Uh, not high growth, not sort of the, the gazelles, uh, but also not startups, the one in between, uh, which, which we found in all was left out. So that's where we're going with the project. Uh, what I want to do today is, uh, we would have been, Mark would have told you a little bit about the project, Matt would have told you about some of the background to it, I would have told you about some of the pedagogy. Then we wanted to hand it over to you, really, because uh, in that sort of open uh, debate about what, where we might take it forward, I'm going to have a few marks for it as well now, okay? So that's, that's the only bit of difference. There's not too many slides, just a couple, just to set the scene, I think, because yeah? it is a slightly unusual project. Um, basically, the sort of three activity strands that the project puts forward, and the project's a partnership between the University of Plymouth, Cornwall College, uh, and some other training providers. The three strands we put forward is what we call significant events, or enterprise heroes, we call them. So we have been using, um, well, almost like celebrity entrepreneurs. We seem to live in a culture of celebrity entrepreneurs now. We've been using some of those to spark interest, as it were, amongst the local business community. We've <coughs> done some events where we've got in uh, uh, individuals who have um, uh, an interesting story to tell. Coffee for Public was one of them, for example, an interesting story to tell. And <coughs> what we've done is use that as a catalyst, as it were, to create interest amongst the business community. So this is not somebody coming along to do some training, but rather it's somebody coming along to tell a story, often in the evening, often in a hotel. So that's sort of our, our catalyst. Um, from that, we, we, we use that to work with the spark of interest that's been created to develop little communities of interest, as it were, to continue to work with those. Now, I haven't got several years of research to show you that this is working, because it literally is only the last few months we've been doing this. Okay, so it's real ground for here. Yeah. But from that, we've developed these communities and uh, work with those individuals to help push forward. So in other words, there's no syllabus, there's no preset training that we're selling, rather, from some inspiration comes a drive, a desire amongst those companies to want to do something slightly differently, and then we try to best facilitate that. We have some certain constraints under our funding, we're not allowed to do one-to-one, -one. it's not allowed to be consultancy, okay, but it has to be group activity, but we're trying to develop those communities. What we hope is from a legacy from that, that will create a more sustainable community of growth, and that will talk about that further. <coughs> Two, I mean. <laughs> Do you know what the technical definition of a group is? Well, um, sorry, what was the question? What's, what's the minimum group? What's the minimum group? Typically, I mean, we'd be having for a dozen, but I think we probably had four or five. Yeah. Okay. So, the large events, we get sort of 60,000 people out there designed to stimulate the business thinking act as a platform. And we don't target a sector, you know, we, we try to pull people from different sectors together to get uh, cross germination. The smaller workshops, then, as Matt just said, 10 to 12, but we can come down in numbers from that. And then we get expert support, obviously, through the college and its partners. Uh, there is research going on behind that we're, uh, we're not directly involved in, we're not doing ourselves, in other words, independently to ensure that the money's being well spent. <coughs> so, this is kind of what we look at, yeah? We get one of our business events, as it were, this creates a community of interest. They start to explore issues and hopefully start to develop a sort of community of practice and a community of innovation. So we're trying to get some of these companies to work together. Now, I appreciate there's a lot of networking organizations that already exist and do a really good job. Okay, this is not so much a networking opportunity, but rather an opportunity to find people that are at a similar place to you in terms of wanting to grow. Now, it may not be the same industry, it may not be growing the same way, but that you can share some of the pain, I suppose, but also some of the uh, um, stories <coughs> about how that growth is possible. So we're trying to collect like-minded individuals together. And that's, sorry, that's a really important learning point because you've got people bringing the same issues, whether that's an HR issue or a marketing issue or finance, from different, you know, probably different businesses in different sectors. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> now, man, I think this is your bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I'm just going to talk about where it, where it came from. More importantly, the 
cost, as the slide says, is um, this, this thing we, we dreamt up between the university and the College of Learning Based Business Development. And I know it's a bit literal, but we set out to try and have terminology that companies will <coughs> to understand very easily. Um, in terms like enterprise innovation, we found companies really like it because they didn't really understand it. You know, it does so, um, so uh, it, it, it focuses on the outcome of the business, but works through a notion of change. Typically, a manager, not always, but typically a manager. Um, so, although it's about the individual, it's about the individual in the context of how they're going to help the business grow and develop. Um, so, it's different from training that respect, because training is about the individual. Um, so, so that's standard. I mean, I don't think that everyone's familiar with that, and that's probably a common practice now. I think the, the learning journey of practice to theory back to implementation. Um, this this point and the next point, could the others, next point up as well, Brian? These are both about learning organisation sort of theory, really. I think, um, uh, and we're trying to really convince these small companies, and typically they're employing less than fifty people. Not even SMEs, you know, the problem we don't really have, you know. Our, our, our biggest, probably SME, is, is um, our biggest, our biggest company is only just over SME size, so actually we're dealing with a lot of very small companies. So, um, oh, there's Mark Smith. The, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm not here, Sorry, I'm not here, MD of this. <laughs> That's coming. Uh, yeah, so we're trying to get organisations to realise that. That actually there's value in becoming a learning organisation, and actually, you know, a lot of a lot of small companies that's quite that's quite a challenge for them because they're so up to the eyeballs of the day with the day job. But thinking that they could be a learning organisation is really you know, yeah, um, cultural change, therefore. Uh, and, and we want it's, it's different from so this is not you know this is not business coaching, it's not intervention. This is all based the, the success of this depends on building long-term relationships. That's it. You can't do that. It won't work. So um, this is the response. So in a way, it's size of the wrong order. But I have to set that scene with, with, with the previous slide. This is where we. This, these are the challenges then that we were looking to um, address. So, uh, and when I say we, I'm always talking about university and college in sort of four or five years in the making. <coughs> so the traditional business school, which both university and college had tried to work in Cornwall, didn't. It was trying, it was a sort of methodology of, of you know, a corporate methodology trying to work with tiny businesses. So we knew that wouldn't work. Um, we also were really painfully aware that actually the people in that grow a business are in business and they're not in institutions. Uh, so our job was once the sensation really you know, pointing to the people that you know, asked us the questions. Also, we had this, you know, we've had, Corn, we've had 20 years now. European funding going back to a convergence of Jets of Line 5B and before that. And that's created, especially in the current program, convergence distortion. So, so the powers that be decided that they would spend a lot of money on high growth coaching, well, there just aren't that many high growth potential businesses in court. They just don't exist. No matter what the outputs say, they're not there. So, so this is about actually trying to be more uh, relevant. Um, we felt there was this gap between kind of coaching and training, and so this seems to have plugged that gap in a way. Um, uh, and let me say, this is really again about the learning organisation point, you know, and, and this sort of two decades of European funding, which will end one day, and then what we're going to have left afterwards, if we're not careful, that it might be a lot. So, this is, you know, the, the, the cultural change of learning organisations sort of uh, take on of that, that philosophy is, is critical. Um, and, and you know, input from businesses told us that whatever we did, it has to have a rigid effect on the impact. Is there one more? Yeah, there's one more. Um, and all the way through this, I know everyone says they do this, but we really did. Um, we consulted heavily with businesses, and we still do. In fact, this is all about, it's about the business network, uh, and, and the need to give them a voice on how it's done to them. And you know, actually, that we've talked about some of the social enterprise, which you know, businesses actually control. I mean, we, we haven't got to that, but we're still in this country. Okay. 
Um, but but putting all those differences that Matt was talking about between training, consultancy, networks, all those different bits and pieces, we, we played around with it. Frank, Frank, no, Frank, we spoke about Frank once earlier. Uh, this framework, though, was based on research which consists of me drinking enough coffee one morning to wake up and then write it down. That's about it. Okay, so it is open to criticism, but I'd be very interested to hear what you've had to say about it in that sense. It's not based on any big scale research, it's just a feeling that I've had over the years as an academic. We can move from training where the assumption is that the trainer has the knowledge that they're going to impart on you, and the participant is rather sort of passive and, 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 and listen and learn. It may interact a little bit, but basically uh, a lot of companies are very used to that in terms of training. Everything from health and safety right the way through to management training sometimes takes that form, and the outcome is supposedly, supposedly <coughs> new skills or new knowledge. Education itself, again, the lecturer has knowledge, I'm thinking about higher education here, it's often semi-passive on the part of the individual, on the student. They listen, they learn, <coughs> hopefully discuss and critique and question them. That's what we're trying to create from that. And the ability to acquire skills and to analyze and critique is hopefully what we get at the end of the higher education uh, experience. Consultancy on the ground, the consultant possibly has the knowledge. Again, it's the sort of semi-passive approach with the, with the individual, depending on the consultant, of course. There's a listen, learn, question, defining terms of reference, and, and it's sort of like a board solution, as it were. The consultants have come in and fixed this for us, possibly. Yeah. Okay. Now I appreciate there's a range of different types of consultants. From a network, and we have a few of those in Cornwall, that knowledge exists within the network, and there's an interaction with others, probably to find their own terms of reference again. And there's ongoing development solutions and emotional relationships. What we're hoping to do, our theory anyway, is that the knowledge exists within the network of businesses and the associates, and we include ourselves within those associates as they want to work together. And we want to interact much more than is traditionally the case. The wonderful thing about what we have, and that's why I'm really interested to hear what your ideas are, is because we have quite a loose brief in that sense. We're quite fortunate in that sense, as it were, with regards to targets. That's, that, that's probably a once in a lifetime opportunity, partly through Matt's skillful offering of the, of the original bid, but it's a once in a lifetime opportunity there for us as academics, I think, to do something with that. <coughs> So we hope then that we're going to develop skills, but also the ability to analyze, to critique, to grow capacity within the network. Solutions emerge from those relationships that they have. So we're trying to create a more dynamic learning environment within Cornwall amongst the businesses. Um, and again, as, as Matt said, the, the kind of unique thing about Cornwall to a large extent is that everything has been free for so long. It's like a benefits culture in a sense. You talk, we talk about nationally. But training has been free for so long that companies don't see why they should have to pay for it after all we pay tax. Why should I have to pay for this? Why, why, why do I have to pay for it to come on a training program? Why should I have to pay for this? Because we have provided them for free through the open funding. So that's created an interesting situation for us. So we're trying to revalue as it were what education is worth. It's a tricky one. Um, this is kind of how we play it. This is the penny dropping here. Okay, I'm not particularly artistic, but that's the penny dropping. Um, and uh, um, that was the, uh, you know, the inspirational speaker, the, 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 the famous entrepreneur or what have you. <coughs> and the penny drops with a couple of the individuals in the room who, who kind of been inspired by it to do something a little bit different. Well, hit everybody, but maybe the other one will. But they're inspired to do something differently or think slightly different. Well, actually, do you know what? I've rekindled my interest in my business. Go forward from that. Now, of course, that, that sort of discovery that takes place then, maybe uh, this group forms and one of the individuals within that group is particularly um, uh, at the forefront of it work in, in terms of actually they've grouped around this individual because they've already got best practice and, and they're working with this individual because they've got best practice. And so, you know, it may take place then uh, with uh, in, uh, visits to each other's companies uh, and, and, and a sort of a learning circle develops, but where one of the individuals, not necessarily one of the academics, but one of the individuals themselves are, are leading that group. <coughs> Alternatively, of course, um, we may have yet more speakers, external speakers, working with those groups on things that the groups have identified. So it's a little bit like the, the unconference thing yesterday. This is an unbusiness school thing. Um, and through all of that, we kind of work towards this actualization. So you see, it's quite lucky. We are very lucky. What we want, of course, is some more ideas about uh, what you would do if you were as lucky as us. And that's what I'd like to impose, really. If you were us, uh, Mark has now joined us, the, the managing director, or chief executive, what are we, what is your title? Executive director. Executive director, that's all through me. So the executive director has just joined us. And that's what I'd like to pose to you, really. It's a strange room, isn't it, to, to work in that sort of way. But 
What would you do if you had our chance, our opportunity to work <coughs> with businesses without a remit to deliver certain things, but rather to deliver what they wanted? Your thoughts on that, Colin? Uh, well, given that I had the good fortune to be invited by your students mm. to attend a conference by Skype, yeah. uh, I'm naturally thinking that uh, you said that you didn't have the, the high growth enterprise firms, you know, naturally based there and, uh, and those sorts of things. So, if you sort of maybe did an audit of, you know, something that you can gain from what you have, but you know, what might your collective wish list be? And how might you use technology to import? Some of those other people said, so you can actually create some virtual membership to the physical membership. Broad, broaden the, broaden the uh, yeah, I mean, broaden the definition out. We, we're bound to help people in the mobile funding issue, which we said, but that help can come internationally. Mm -hmm. I think the technology is interesting. Don't you have any thoughts? I said help. Come, come on, and join us. Come on, join us. Yes, I'm late, everybody. My excuse, I have to go and see a business, which is <laughs> my job, really. So, um, the technology piece is really important to us because I think what we do, Brian, give your slide back or give your speakers and Brian, that's possible. Um, this is all about human interaction, absolutely and totally. So it's not about, as Matt said, it's not about the imposition of a program. Though we might bring certain elements of learning into the process. That's why Brian worked with me because Brian's my expert in bringing pedagogy to bear on what we do. For me, in the groups we start to set up, the, the key aspect is it's led by them. So if they want to use a technology-based dialogue platform, that's fine. And I'll support them in that, and I'll support them in the best use of that. It's another way of bringing learning into their overall, overall experience. In terms of, am I drawing down international resources right now? No, I'm drawing down national resources. I'm actually bringing people physically to meet each other in, in Cornwall. Um, but I'm not doing sort of remote work right now. What I've said to the groups when they want to set up and move forward is that they can choose to draw down whatever resource they want that I can access. I can access it from Plymouth, or from Cornwall College, or indeed from Exeter, from Falmouth, from other universities in our game network. Um, it's, it's important that they get what they're actually looking for. Nobody's asked yet to go beyond the boundaries of the UK. But I am going to push that forward as an option, and then we'll need to think about properly how we might do that. But I'm not, I'm not averse to sort of, you know, grabbing a Belgian or an Africana and flying them over to Cornwall to New Guinea and get a flight into New Guinea that way, and actually sitting down with people because I want people to think about the internationalisation of business and their role. One of the issues about Cornwall generally is it's a fantastically vibrant market. There are lots of people that do trade nationally and internationally, but they're in the minority. So they're connected to the world, it's something we're also trying to emphasize. <clears throat> so I think, in a way, this links to what um, Frank was talking about yesterday, you know, with the, the sort of um, partnerships and the networks that he was working out of Africa with, uh, that we're trying to do on a smaller scale uh, and in a different way. But then, at the point, we have a lot of very successful companies, very successful high tech companies. Um, but we seem to be uh, a, a county of two halves in that way. We have some uh, very amazing companies in that sense, and yet an awful large number of really good quality ones, you know, which are great, you know, quite a lot of employment, um, but actually there's a lot of work that could be done with them to help them grow. So we've got to create a culture of that, whilst weaning people off the dependency of Okay. Um, how do you get people engaged? Ah, that, oh, that's fab. That's really easy. Because, um, okay. you carry on. Um, in, terms of, in terms of the activity, um, I think Matt probably at the start outlined the thing with the Enterprise Heroes and the learning workshops and the research it was very pretty. Brian. Brian did it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what Cornwall is good at <coughs> is networking and conversation. We don't really have to invent networking groups because people do get together, they do talk, they do talk in a wide variety of ways. The bit that's missing is the what happens next. So if somebody goes to something inspirational, learns a lesson, gets inspired, comes out, you know, got everything up, really happy that they do nothing. Because there is no support after that. So what we say with the, with the enterprise program essentially is if you're fired up by something else, come and talk to us. And we will 
put you together with like-minded people, put you together with some resources, and start you off on a learning journey as a group to take those things into action. So it's 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 use, use it self-actualized. It's actualized. I mean, it's actualized by the users. They they can they they are starting to realise that this unstructured business support program, this provision of learning, is actually um, not quite the universal gadget, but it's almost there. So they can they come and bring ideas to us. So we, in the last week, we sponsored some activity about around um, agile software development and the process of that. So we did a little bit of sponsorship, brought some international speakers in, had a bit of a bit of a conference, about 100 people all over the all over the world flew in and drove in and did all the kinds of things. Fantastic. A group of 12 people have said, actually, we need to develop our knowledge of how we form scrum teams to take forward software, and we'd like to do that as a group, and we'd like to do that with these seven key people. Is that okay? To which my response is yes. Yes, we'll sit down now, work out with you how you do that, when you do that, how we can support you, how we can play the learning process in and, and capture that, and away you go. So that's why it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic program, because we can follow people's aspirations. There are certain limitations we have to bear because we've taken Brussels' shilling. But we can do that quite easily as well. And, and we know that with our larger activity, our own inspiration activity, we're going to have a core of people who are compliant with the, with the um, strict design program. And we can just have a, a fringe of people yeah. who may be interested but not actually going to do it. Also, I mean, it is worth saying to be separate, but actually these, these penny drop events, these keynote events where you have, we've had BJ Cunning, we've had Deirdre Bounds, set up iSquire.com, we've had Shah Rosman, yeah. and actually, you know, there, there are communities of people who've called that will actually get out, come out of their business. That's the trick. How do you get somebody out of their business yeah. when they're doing five jobs in their business for a morning or an afternoon? Yeah. That's worked, and, and also it's present with the vibe. Our, our events slot it, when you look at, we look at what's around, and we deliberately do things that don't fit. Because if we just do more of the same that other guys and, and, and we're going to do it, then we won't get people out there. Yeah. So, so BJ Cunningham, who, is, who is, uh, was a very good speaker, you know, got 80 people out of their businesses to talk about how he developed this death cigarette brand. Completely, completely, you know, sort of left field. But really started people talking about from that one conversation, we had a group of people who realised they spent an absolute shed load of money on IT, social media, social presence for their brand that was completely worthless. Where did they go next? How did they learn how to do more, you know, better in the future? Another group of people who realised that they actually had created this brand around their own business, some businesses trading very well on a national basis, but had, even, had not realised the value of what they created. So again, divergence, but stuff we can support. Does that make sense? Thank you back. I empathise completely with your discussion on the culture of, of businesses not being willing to pay. I'm from the Highlands and Islands, so we had similar, you know, long-term European projects and lots of, um, you know, variety of players in the market offering things for free. So I'm just interested in the strategies that you're you're employing to try and get people that are willing to revalue education, trying to pay for it. I mean, when does that happen in this model? All the way through, everybody pays for everything. Stop charging. That's a different. I've used that. I mean, we've we've agreed. We've used that to differentiate because I don't know what it's like in H and I. But when when you put on a, you spend time, you run a lovely event, <coughs> fantastic speakers, you're ready for eighty people and twenty turn up because it's just one of those things where they've not committed. So I do that very old fashioned thing and, and take money off them. So not only are they spending money to come out of their business because of opportunity cost. But I'm actually taking, I'm not taking a huge amount, I'm taking 29.99 for a half day and about 50 quid for a full day. Which is, in the world of conferences, which is absolutely, you know, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't run a business <laughs> like But, once you've taken 50 pounds off a Cornishman for a day's activity, <laughs> you will come along, and that's very good because you'll vote, you know, he or she has made a commitment. That's not a, that's not a cultural comment, it's actually a commitment, isn't it? That point of view, anybody, it applies to anybody in, you know, in the UK. Yeah. Even booking up shit, fantastic. But so that's the that's the important point. You've got to put the charge I put on these activities has nothing to do with the value. It is well below value, but it has everything to do with motivation and everything, getting the right people in the room. Because especially in the learning group context, 
initially you, you will get people attracted to, to, to come into these groups that really aren't committed. And you know, in a learning group of 10, 12, two non-committed people really does start to mess things up. So again, a bit of a gateway to being about and, and, you know, my, I think it's marginal cost for him. Really to start to sort the way we use the phrase sort the wheat from the chat, which is probably not very pleasing. But I mean in terms of in terms of that, that's the way that's the way I would do it. How I'm doing it currently. Yeah, I was just going to say actually, I, I worked, I think I'll let Brian's former students actually call it, when he sort of visited over in, in Cornwall in recruitment um, to actually get money out of Cornishman is, uh, is, is, yeah, it is a challenge, you've done really well, so you can get it going on for half day or four days. I worked in Yorkshire previously. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I found actually when I work um, in internships and work placements for the student beforehand and using LinkedIn actually and those sorts of forums really good developing stimulus and put them together to talk about forum and it's easy as well because I've actually did them out of all the different networking groups across the there and put this idea out, those who are interested will actually come to me and talk about it and find out more and because obviously my post would appear on their, uh, their networks who are not in Cornwall, that develops stimulus elsewhere um, and get referrals that way. So I think for me personally, if I was looking at what you're trying to do, I would definitely make virtual forums, virtual conversations, which obviously you must probably do that anyway, but that sort of strikes is quite an obvious, easy link as well, because a businessman doesn't have to leave their business to do that. They can attend one or two networking events and tap into those people and those forums virtually once you're doing it at a place of work, which I thought was quite a good thing. I think, you know, again, I mean, both of you absolutely right from that point. <coughs> This the re initial report piece. I think is is harder if it's if it's totally virtual. Yeah. But if you've had, as you say, some interaction, then you can transfer that. I think into into other methods. I mean, my real passion with this, the reason I got involved with Matt and, and Brian with this program is, I think it's really scalable. And I think you know, at the moment we're looking at sort of a very limited geography and a, and a, a very general um, audience. But there's no reason why, in terms of you know different people in this room, we, we couldn't create you know sort of cross country and cross national boundary groups of learners that are looking at similar issues in their businesses, but that the issues are driven by that that commonality. That it, it, I did spend a lot of time in a, in a previous part of my career working on structured business support. You know the kind of the kind of this is good for you mentality, um, and it and. There are basic things that most people have to comply with from a British point of view in terms of British business life. But there are also lots of things that we don't cover in formalised education that people can actually draw out of each other and then be motivated to go further by the right injection of expertise at the right moment. And I think that's a, a national, transnational activity rather than just a, you know, a dutchy wide activity. And I, I, that's one of the reasons we came to talk here, is just trying to try and broaden it out. Really about um, recognition uh, in South Korea, government gets uh, lots of benefit not from giving uh, financial assistance to successful businesses, but by merely giving them recognition, which in their culture is a crisis. Uh, I'm just wondering about the participation of the people that we have in here and the way in which you might be able to be part of you know, the legacy of the program and terms of the knowledge which may spill over and be useful to other people, but also being able to recognise the cooperation and interaction. So not necessarily whether any good knowledge was developed or what, but just the willingness of people to interact and to contribute to the to these various networks. I'm just wondering how you might be able to actually put something sort of almost like I would like that you know that this person was willing to interact with this person and, and so obviously they become something larger than life because of their willingness to be a part of the process. Yeah, no, that's, no, I think that's interesting. I can remember having conversations with, with Mark and Matt about this um, uh, a while ago because, as you appreciate, we were in the middle of all of the strategy and all the operationalization and all of it. But that idea of people going on to be almost like um, uh, members of something you want to belong to because it has a, 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 like a status, isn't it? It's, it's worth being a member of it because that means something about the way you run your business. And um, that's something we, uh, we, we've, we, we've, we were looking at, uh, probably actually, we were up here talking. Thinking about that, uh, probably twelve months ago now. But um, 
uh, that's something probably I think we need to revisit because it is interesting that idea because it, it sets you apart from the other businesses but acknowledges um, uh, your um, contribution but also your willingness to, to um, engage in that sort of way. That's, that's, that's definitely one. I pick back up again. I mean, I think you know, I, we, we, in, in all, you know, being rather straight in the kind of like that drop for a while, we concentrate on actually doing the activity yeah. and some of this stuff, which is actually incredibly valuable, needs to be brought back to the to, you know, to the top of our agenda because at the, at the minute we're you know we're writing it. We're we're in there working with small groups of people, getting to grips with issues, being very responsive. I, I mean responsive rather than reactive because we do we are listening to them and working with them and rather than just sort of making blanket provision. And it, it does it's a, we've got nearly the entire team in the room. So it's not it's not you know it's the production of an army of people. There are two more members that are not in the room working particularly at the moment. So we're really trying to keep it quite tight because we don't want to put a lot of money into back office function. It does look like you're doing the classic small business thing of working up against the culture. You're working <laughs> in the business. Ironically. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. I mean, to be fair, yes, I understand that. I mean, if Mark is running the show now and you've only been doing it for less than a I mean, it's six months yeah. in probably. So we are in genuine formation. But you're right. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. if you've got. Like, where is the point about, about spotting the positive stories that are coming about yeah. about collaborations? They are your most powerful advertising tool when somebody says, look what came out of it. But if they've got time for that, I'm doing it all. There is a bit of that. That's it's true. And there is a bit of that. What, what, <coughs> again, you've got to it, it's explain that I mean, the context of our low carb is such <coughs> that, I mean, we're talking about 20,000 batteries for business, of which we're you know, striking those quite dramatically, as Matt said, we're not, you know, the the gazelles, Dickie Jones calls them the gazelles. <coughs> we, we, we've got some fairly buoyant businesses that we're working with, but we're really looking at that strip across the middle. Yeah, about 3,000, 4,000 businesses. And they're the ones that generally don't get, you know, listened to, or generally get the kind of, here's the service, here's the book, off you go approach, and they come, you know, we come, we come to them, and we listen to them and say, then we can help you in a really flexible way, and they react very positively. Well, that's where the long term benefit is, because that's going to go leaping yeah, off yeah, the yeah. and that is. With or without that, yeah. Without, yeah. yeah. And for Cornwall, or indeed for any other region of the country, actually, the high growth businesses do need some help. Yeah. But it's the, the watch of the guys in the yeah. middle yeah. that's going to make the long term sustainable. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you're right. I was talking to the, the guy from Aston, Mark, what's his name, who did the top 50% stuff. I can't remember his name. Nestle, right? Nestle. 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 He's only chatting to me informally, but this is on camera, isn't it? That said, um, <laughs> <laughs> you wish you'd never done that because it skewed government policy towards yeah. these perceived gazelles, and actually, a lot of the, a lot of the value comes from these big scribe yeah. businesses across the middle. Oh, and we've, we've sort of gone like this, and looking back, <coughs> I mean, hindsight's always perfect, isn't it? So looking back, looking back, he thinks, actually, I think I should have. But we've got a multi million pound program in Cornwall. Multi million pound program, which is the program focused on these high growth businesses and, and the people delivering that themselves turn out to these companies, aren't they? We need to be working with more than little companies. Are you surprised, the people surprised that people surprised that you are able to help them? You are there. Have they been approached by universities or colleges before? Cornwall College is really active in the business community. I mean, it's, it's tremendously powerful. That's one of the great things about being an alliance between Plymouth University and Cornwall College. Plymouth University, obviously, in its regular core, what we call the core business, um, has the highest number of HE students of, of, in Cornwall because it works with partner colleges and, and engages. Cornwall College itself, through a function called Cornwall College Business, of those around, let's say, 20,000 for the sake of argument, there's some small change involved in Cornwall. Cornwall College Business have actively engaged with, or are actively engaged with, 7,000 of those, nearly a third. So they're very well involved in, the, in business life. That's it's across everything. Yeah. From apprenticeships through to foundation. So it's, you know, it's, it's, there's quite a lot. You know, the, the, the piece of activity that in terms of tying in the... Did you ever Yes, I my mouth. It's just like that kind of thing. Tweeting. That's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the thing that we found in Cornwall that, that's, that's worked very well, yes, there is genuine surprise that the vision is there for them. Um, there is a, a quite a rapid word of mouth piece yeah. that goes on. The, the bit that's the most difficult is the too good to be true piece. You mean you really can do this? Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> Can't that believe it? You know, we can determine where it goes? Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be a program in there somewhere. <laughs> You've got a doctor. There must be a program in there somewhere. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's true. I mean, it, it's getting over that initial scepticism and then it's, it's quite fast there. But has then, uh, then that opened up more to the university and college from others because of that word of mouth? Yes, it started to, because that's what you just start, but yeah, 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 you start yeah. a discussion. I mean, the, the, the two, oh, you could do that. Or we, do yeah, that. we've got some yeah. more people now working with us on our foundation of Green IT, and I, a company, I mean, and I think that's a result of, of this change of attitude. So uh, they're giving giving back in a sense, but they're surprised that you I actually remember you because they don't think you know. No, 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 they the, forgot we were there. It's true. The bit that's difficult, the bit that we found most challenging is problem definition. Because it, you know, people come with these broad things. Okay, I just do want to get one. What do you want to form a learning group? Procurement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's that's a fairly broad. And you start drilling down, and we have, you know, we have guys who are very good at, at um, you know, at listening to businesses and listening and, and looking at their numbers and figures, and helping them trying to drill down to actually what the what the procurement issue actually you mean debtor control because you've got lots of money going out of this business or other pieces. And that's for me. That's the that's the another part of the wonder of the program because somebody comes to you and says, "I've got proper debts," and when you sit and listen to them, and then put me in touch with them, but with a buddy, effectively, they start realising actually I haven't got proper debts. It's something completely different. Yeah. So uh, one of our we to try and catch that. We are a bit crafty. To try and catch that general stuff, we're running sessions called um, "Managing Capacity for Growth." There's a great title. <laughs> what does that include? That includes everything you know that's kind of not elsewhere specified by the category. Mm. Really brings people in for a dialogue. So it's laid back from H and I, and then the lady in the uh, Burgundy. Actually, you've answered. I wanted to know what you found most difficult, and you know, most surprising. Yeah. So thank you. That's really yeah, yeah, good. So once you open, open up the chocolate box, and everybody wants the strawberry. Right? Yeah. There's always the bit. I just jump in there. As well, one of the things I've noticed. It's tricky sometimes, it's making sure that the, the individuals coming to these groups aren't trying to sell something to the others. Yeah. And that's something being, being trained <laughs> or, or consultants, as it were, that um, they're not interested in growing their own business, just, which is, I understand, that's very entrepreneurial, um, but it kind of skews what's happening in the group. Yeah, we make, we make it clear we're not being an that kind of thing. Sorry. Okay. No, not at all, not at all. Um, I live in the Isle of part of Hampshire, um, richest county in the country. Um, we have similar economic problems um, to uh, Cornwall, not quite so, the same thing. Um, some in South Devon, South Dorset, the same sort of things. How would you... We have no money from Europe. Objective one, oh, oh, no way. Uh, because we're part of Hampshire. Um, how could you pick this up and drop it in somewhere like that? Interesting. Mm -hmm. How do you do a zero, zero capital start? It, it, it. I mean, straight away, first thing I say to you is, Whatever we find out, we'll share. So if you want to know what we know, we'll share that with you. That's that's a that's a you know we're in this for not it's, 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 we're not maybe a bit too close to treat. I want to share this, I want to share what we've learned yeah. and what issues come out of people. So I, you know anybody in the room wants that for us, we can ask Ted that. Absolutely straight off. In terms of um, the good burgers of Hampshire coming together to provide some support, the support that you need. In, initially, especially in part, not, it's been a long time since I worked. I did some work on the you know, like years ago, mm. but again, it is a very close knit business community. Yeah, that's and there are similar stripes. I think. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some of the issues that we faced in, in Cornwall, you'll face actually in a more acute sense. We obviously, I should say that our program is an enterprise program for Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. Yeah. So, from our point of view, our learning on the Scilly is to be is to go there with with defined provision at like defined times and allow people to to really seek us out because yeah. certain issues, so we, we've run a session recently on succession planning and that's, you know, that, that's the most bizarre thing to do as a facilitator because you're actually binding people by non-disclosure agreements in an environment that's a safe space to collaborate because people are so nervous because of the nature of our small business environment that somebody might work out by physically them being at the session that they're selling their business. Yeah. Because you know, while Cornwall is at the end of the peninsula, you imagine it's an island. Yes. Because it is a very, a very tight and cohesive and wonderful business community. But their information does travel around quite quickly. Yes. So on the island, on the Isle of Wight, you'll have that or more. Yeah. But, um, 
in terms of getting money, I don't know is the honest answer. In terms of sharing expertise, absolutely. Well, that's how much we would need. So this is a sound perverse, but the fact that you haven't got European funding might be in the longer term beneficial. Oh, we don't get, we don't get initiative fatigue. Mean, the, the place to start if you haven't got a lot of European funding is with the business community. I mean, that, you know, the trick to this is the cultural change in the mind of the small businesses to understand that actually the real value comes from them understanding that it's good to be a learning organisation. There's value in that. Um, and so if there were a chamber of commerce or something like that, you know, in the very strong chamber, in the other way, then that's what well, that's where I was. That's where I was. That's where I was starting. Are you going to borrow Brian? I'll lend you Brian. I was going to say I'm coming up to the other way in a few weeks. Actually, oh, you really? to teach at the Sailing Academy, so because uh, they do a degree at the Sailing Academy, so that someone else has paid for me to come up. So <laughs> there you go. Give me a shout. I live in Kent. It's our last one. This question here. Yeah. What's your plan for sustainability when the funding runs out? Because it will. It, it, it will. Um, the ability to draw down, um, well, two things. But the university, obviously, Cornwall College, it's a bit wrong to see all that test, isn't it? It's about Cornwall. It's for Cornwall. It works in that way. It works to support Cornwall. Plymouth University made a long term commitment to Cornwall. Part of our overall approach to enterprises, we manage the Accelerate the innovation centres in Cornwall for the next 25 years. So the funding may run out for this programme, but we will still endeavour to provide the support to businesses in groups that they can draw down. The amount that we can draw down and the fact that you know we might be able to sort of link, I don't know, Alexander Osterwalter from Switzerland and fly over, that'll all you know, be quite difficult to sustain. But I do think the migration that we're trying to do by getting people to pay for the experience being together and sharing is part of the plan. It'll never be a fully washed its face activity, but I think we can sustain the impetus of it beyond the life of the funding program. This gives us a good kickstart. And slow, slowly ramp those fees, of course, that you're yeah. talking about earlier. You know, so as they get more accustomed to paying, slowly, so I'm not being cynical there, but slowly ramp the fees as they get more accustomed to paying, as we get closer to true value. If you get close to 50 funding for the day, actually, you don't have to put that many people in a room. All that data have been really rather profitable. Mm. Yes. Um, and, and also, your point about bringing the, the, the big names in, as the program becomes more established yeah. in a smaller community, there will be names from within the community. Yes, so you're alumni. Yeah. Yeah. We, we already have that. So love yeah. 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 on yeah. the back of the national. Yeah. I mean, that's, that works really well. That's a, and that's a really important point. It isn't some big wig over there who's done it. It's somebody who. We at least mm -hmm. see Whenever we bring somebody in from outside, we surround that person with people from our community who we know have equally valid experience. They may not be as dramatically celebrity famous or, or successful in, in, the, in the sort of conference and speaker circuit, but they have a value that they can add to each other. It's just it's a based <coughs> platform. It's a, it's a very you know, it's a it's a classic marketing model really, get something really flashy to attempt to always put the best model on the showroom floor with all the bells and whistles and make sure you've got a line of equally valuable vehicles in the room that people can actually buy and try and take and be, be accustomed to. So for me, I'm not trying to be a super salesman, what I am trying to say is it's never the case that we bring somebody in from outside and do not surround them with people locally who have got equally valued experience to share. It's an important part, I think. I can remember really, sorry, but <laughs> the, the salt, wasn't it? Salt is the retail yeah. that does the clothes. But there was a really interesting that the, the woman from their sort of marketing and social media department came and gave really practical examples of how they've done it themselves uh, and had really quite impressive, not only driving traffic, but actually that converting to sales on, on their website for their clothing. That's that was a little company. Yeah, and she just did a really practical fact and ca uh, kind of uh, natural way explained what that company was doing. I can remember a lot of people in the room, inspired by the the, the, the national speaker, though, suddenly saw a practical implication of it and how someone that they could actually chat to on a daily basis, I'm sure she can appreciate being chatted on a daily basis, but <laughs> could chat to almost on a daily basis in the community, was doing exactly that and was getting that sort of thing. So that was really good. Chat there had a question. Yeah, I was just, just going to say actually there's a huge overlap between what University X is doing on the Toronto campus and in the in terms of 
engage with local companies for student placements. Um, there's a whole huge employability agenda on campus, so there's uh, unpaid student place placement. So if there's interaction between what we're trying to achieve in terms of greater introduction to companies interested in training and development, mm -hmm. and possibly signposting to people on campus that are looking for companies for student placements, and vice versa, there is a little overlap there in terms of help each other out and sort of more of a collaboration between extra from the university. I'm sure there's something we can sort of put you in touch. Absolutely. I mean, our, our, brand is, our brand, as you know, is with Plymouth University, yeah. and there's a key reason for that word with. Yeah. Um, and again, I mean, again, on, on the ground in Cornwall, we're allied with the combined university in Cornwall program on the potential, which Exeter is a part of. Yeah. And we, we get flows into the enterprise program from two, you know, sort of from, from that, from people who've taken graduates and then realised because the graduate is, is, is wrapped with um, expertise and support. They're just thinking, hang on, I'm the owner and I need some expertise and support. How do I get wrapped with Ah, Mark over there, Matt, Brian, enterprise program, I'm into that piece. Similarly, we have people who actually have, have never considered taking on either a graduate or, or, or indeed you know, sort of a, 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 just a graduate in terms of college and the process of talking business issues through them makes them realise how they can unlock pieces of these work unlocking potential is, is very simple, it's a very, I know it's a very well used term across the country now, but it lets them realise that by making some simple changes to their business, one of which could be an internet or a place, they can really move forward. So it's not, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to give you the it's not wholly altruistic all this, it's getting people involved with the colleges and the universities in a, in a different way rather than just consuming um, just consuming learning has been pretty tough. So, gentlemen, I'm conscious actually we've just uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Each, each, <laughs> each, each, uh, later uh, each the coffee <laughs> break now. So, <laughs> were there any last <laughs> quick questions before we pull the fire on the discussion? I'm sure there'll be plenty of scope to continue to oh. chat over the coffee. No nice questions. Uh, in that case, we all please show up.